digitalization and industry 4.0 SME. For being here to share his knowledge and experience in the area of IoT and blockchain technology. On this great day with merging of minds, we welcome you, sir. I would like to welcome our SB counselors and the society advisors of JIT IEEE SB and IEEE BUBTSB. It is my turn to extend a gracious and inclusive welcome to all the volunteers and the participants. I am very happy and grateful that so many distinguished scholars, faculty members and students have come from, member, come from various regions to have active and interactive learning on IoT and blockchain. I welcome you all with immense pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. S. Lagawan to provide the opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Hiram. Um, I am indeed a pleasure uh, in having this uh, webinar as a celebration of IEEE PES Day. So, uh, IEEE PES is nothing but a, a very old society. It is a power and energy, a power and energy society. So uh, this particular society is um, on behalf of uh, it, it, this society is giving a complete information about the power delivery, power generation, uh, sustainable power, smart grid. So you will have a lot of transactions in uh, IEEE Power and Energy Society, and this is one of the. Uh, uh, very older society of IEEE um, headquarters. And uh, as far as the IEEE Power and Energy Society is concerned, IEEE Power and Energy Society has uh, given free membership for the students for the first year. So um, it is attracting the student members a lot. And of late, uh, the last five, six years, IEEE Power and Energy Society is going uh, a big way. Um, as far as the IEEE Madras section, so our um, SB, JIT SB is coming under IEEE Madras section. IEEE Madras section is really doing uh, very great activities um, all these days. And uh, as far as uh, Madras section is concerned, they have this year, they have uh, started a, a flagship conference like uh, Indicon. We'll have uh, IEEE Indicon uh, conference, a fl flagship conference of uh, India Council. Um, likewise, we'll have R10 conferences, a 10 con. So like that, MassCon, it has been initiated this year, and they are uh, started giving a lot of funding and other things. So I would like to uh, thank the Bangladesh uh, University for uh, collaborating with us. So. Um, I would like to thank uh, uh, the madam, uh, IEEE Bangladesh section uh, chairman, <coughs> Celia Shanas. So we have collaborated with her uh, in a, a few activities, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, she had invited me for uh, two, three uh, activities, and we have invited her. So I think it's a, a good uh, rapport created uh, between the JIT and IEEE Bangladesh section. So thanks to uh, uh, Fahima, Sophia Fahima. Uh, she's a coordinator uh, from JIT side. And I would like to thank the authorities of uh, Bangladesh University uh, student branch. So um, I hope this particular webinar will be an eye opener on IoT uh, in power and energy society. Right? So. Um, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Somasundaram sir uh, being a, a friend for me for a long time. So uh, technically, he has given a lot of inputs to me and uh, he has helped me a lot uh, in, in organizing the webinars or um, he has delivered a lot of uh, webinars and he has been uh, one of our native speaker, I will say, as far as Jit is concerned. So thank you for uh, accepting uh, our invitation, sir. Uh, I hope uh, the, the whole bunch of students and the professionals who have joined uh, for this webinar will uh, take a, a lot of takeaways from this uh, webinar. I hope that will happen with the enlightened uh, uh, address of uh, Dr. Sumasundar. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. 
Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call upon Trifal Islam Roman from BUBTSD to present the speaker profile. Assalamu alaikum to everyone and a very good afternoon to all. Welcome to today's seminar on applications on IoT and blockchain technology for future smart power system organized by Janssen's Institute of Technology, IEEE Student Branch, Mandra Section, and IEEE BUBT Student Branch, Bangladesh Section. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Tarikul Islam Rimon, Department of Tripoli, and the Membership Development Coordinator of IEEE BUBT Student Branch. Today, our speaker is Dr. Sham, uh, Dr. Shuma Sundaram and Bala Subra Maniam. He is a business development of professional educator, researcher with proven and awarded industry 4.0, digitalization, Six Sigma, lean manufacturing, energy management system, implementation experience in leading MNCS like St. Govin Glass, Velo Hansen Drives, ZF, and Siemens. He is a continuous learner and proud alumnus of IIM. Liverpool John Moore's University, IIT, Bangalore, CEG, and University, and GPT. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Somasundram Balasubramanan, sir, to present the presentation. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for the warm greetings. Yeah, let's uh, go to the session. And before going to the session, I'd like to uh, make some <coughs> ground rules, okay? So I'm not going to use any PowerPoint presentations uh, or anything. I'm going to interact with you, but in a more, uh, I would say, in a uh, informal or a virtual way, yeah? So that's my idea of uh, this, uh, uh, the way how I want to take this session forward, yeah? So I'm going to use a platform called Mentimeter for this, okay? And I hope uh, many of you might know about this. Uh, so uh, that is what we are going to do now and uh, request you all to pin my screen, okay, because I have logged in from two devices. So you have to pin my screen. Hope my screen is visible for you all. Okay, so you yes, sir, it's yes, sir. Ah, great. So you'll be hearing from one of my account and uh, you will be seeing something in another account. Yeah, cool. So, so uh, first of all, I want to understand from you, uh, okay? So let's uh, have some small uh, things, yeah. Let's first thing, what I want to understand from you is, uh, what is the device you are using for, uh, uh, for this session, yeah? Whether it is a mobile phone, laptop, desktop, or tablet. Uh, I think many of you might have used Mentimeter. Uh, it's very simple, go uh, use your mobile phone or uh, your browsers. Go to www.menti.com. You can use the code 86061205 and cost your votes, please. Maybe for the benefit of some, I'm also putting the link in the chat so that what is my chat? Yeah, so that you can also click and cast your votes. And the results are here. I can see one person using laptop and desktop. So we are 89. Let's see how participative you all are. Okay. OK, 
Okay, good. Four. Let's touch at least fifty. So, mobile is picking up. Yeah, no laptop have taken over. Laptop have taken over. Laptop is leading. Mobile is lying back. Laptop is leading again. Yeah, very nice. But I have only seventeen votes. Yeah, it's eighteen now. We are ninety-two in the chat. Minus two of my ID, then it is ninety. Minus organizers, it can be eighty. So by this time, I should have got at least fifty um, inputs. Yeah. I have only twenty here. Request everyone to participate, please. Twenty-one. Oh, mobile is blowing. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. Again, mobile is slowly progressing. I don't know. Twenty-five. Yo, great. Laptop is now increasing. Twenty-six. Okay, so first of all, there are ninety participants. Only I have thirty votes, approximately. I need more participation, please. More participation, please. Yeah, someone have raised the hand, please. Any problem? I have thirty-one votes only now. Let's touch at least fifty. Okay, cool. So. i can see there is a equal divide between laptop and mobile okay it's okay so now i understand like now i understand uh, yeah it's not a link uh, you have to use the code and i think i have already posted the link yeah it's cool fine so there are only 32 words uh, i hope i request all other participants also to kindly Uh, participate, okay. Unless otherwise you don't participate, this is not going to be a session of, um, I don't know, the use for you. Yeah, good. So there is an equal divide, and I can see most of you are using laptop, or most of the active people are using laptop. It's good. It's good. Great. So with this, let's go to the next important uh, topic. Okay, so what do you think uh, about uh, um, saying? Uh, you think like okay, uh, smart power system is going. is needed okay that's that is what the, the purpose of this particular meeting right so let's understand from you what should be the priority of a smart power system yeah so this is a different type of question uh, i hope it's a word cloud yeah something like that okay so again you have another uh, menti here i'm just copying and pasting the link in the chat so that you can put your thoughts on this yeah so what should be the priority of a smart power system you can also give multiple entries so no problem don't restrict yourself that may be two three more priorities but there is a limitation of words so you have to put it concisely okay try to define it with one or two words yeah one or two words according to you what do you think Should be the priority of a smart power system. You have to go to www.menti.com. Use the code nine seven nine two six zero three eight four. Okay, reduced emission, energy optimization, low cost implementation, less transmission loss, 
less maintenance, very good. Yeah. What is this? Twenty-five. Okay. Any other useful information, please? Yeah. Management protection. Okay. Good. Yeah. Better energy management. Grid systems. I don't understand what is grid systems you want to mean. Okay, so list maintenance. Yeah. Protection, automation, sustainable and secure. Okay. Power saving. Better surveillance. Yeah. Let's wait. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, smart power system. Let's wait. You want? Okay. Remote control. Okay. Automation. A lot of people, I think, they have put automation. Low cost. Smart grid. Okay. Smart power system is a grid. Yeah. Smart power system in the grid. Okay, it has to be. A, it has to constitute to a smart grid. Okay. Information protection, control flow of power, reduced emission, smart energy, less weight. Again, here I have only 20, 21, 23. It is not matching to how many people we are. I don't understand what is Australia. Taken anywhere, okay. Mm -hmm. Implement batteries, okay. Information protection, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something on sustainability, yeah. There is something like sustainable and secure. Reduce commercial losses. Yeah, good one, catchy. Okay, good. So, yeah, so uh, I think more or less, uh, either if you know or don't know, uh, okay, uh, I think uh, most of uh, the answers are uh, matching to uh, the definition of uh, what should be a smart power system, right? So, one, it should be uh, obviously availability is the first and foremost thing, yeah, after that. You have uh, the other things uh, of uh, efficiency, that means less loss and other things, yeah. And after that, you have this. Okay, so hope my screen is visible for you all. And uh, yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. So I'm now switching over to my another device. Okay, great. So it's my iPad. That's for uh, just for my convenience of writing. Okay. So uh, you have mentioned like it is a yeah, smart power system. So the first priority is availability. Okay. Then it should be efficient. Yeah. And uh, obviously, it should be manageable. That is, ease of maintenance. Okay. And that is something called uh, the silence. Okay. That is, uh, it has to be, uh, say, available. Okay. Uh, even when uh, it is what to say disturbed yeah, by say false environment yeah 
plus others, others, others. Yeah. So this should be our priority, right? So smart power system, first it has to be available, efficient, and it has to be manageable, right? Manageable or I would say operatable. Yeah. Please ignore if there are some spelling mistakes, but I'm just on a higher level wants to give you a hint like, okay, these are all the requirements of a smart power system. Yeah. Um, the very important aspect is, yes, these are all are possible. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, there are multiple things uh, when we are talking about uh, availability. Yeah. Nowadays, there is a growing threat of a power system, especially with the cyber attacks. Yeah. So we have to have a secure infrastructure so that we avoid these kind of cyber attacks. That's very important. And uh, another aspect of what is also coming up is uh, um, uh, say uh, it has to be uh, uh, withstand the, uh, the the challenges, right? The, there will be falls, there will be some environmental conditions, uh, and during that time also the system how to withstand. Okay, so it is the reliability of the system that's very important. So that, that is something that is uh, uh, I would say the first priority for us. And after that, uh, the second priority is efficiency. And the third priority is uh, the ease at which we can operate it and uh, we can we can uh, identify abnormalities uh, in the power system much in advance. Okay? So these are all the uh, things. Now, um, there are uh, some new challenges which is also coming up. Okay? So the challenges like, okay, say, uh, increased use of EV. Okay? So EV is going to come up in future. Okay? These are all the challenges which is going to come in the future. One is the electric vehicles, okay, electric vehicles, and the charging system, systems for it, yeah. And uh, there are some new things which is coming up, like I uh, say, distributed generation. So uh, it's not always like the people distribute or I would say generate at one single place. But nowadays, people are having even a uh, solar rooftop, okay, solar. Solar rooftop. Right. So that, that means uh, uh, I can generate for my home and I can also uh, surplus energy, I can kick it out. Okay. So these are all uh, the other things which is coming up. And especially, uh, I, I strongly believe that this is the important challenge we have to immediately uh, attend so that uh, we, we have a sustainable um, uh, energy system. Yeah. Energy system and our power systems are uh, capable of uh, having this particular sustainable thing that is uh, uh, taking the uh, solar energy and other things into it and at the same time there should not be any problem with that yeah so these are all the uh, very important uh, priorities of what we are uh, thinking of okay for the power system now the topic is uh, not about power system what we want to think is uh, how iot and blockchain can be uh, used in power systems right so that is the very important uh, topic of this particular thing so now, now you have now told like what is the priority of a smart system, a smart power system. Now there are two topics in this particular webinar title. One is IoT, another is blockchain. So let's go to uh, blockchain. Yeah, let's go to blockchain, uh, or I would say, uh, or we can go to IoT also. Not a problem. Yeah. Let's have one more short minty for this. Okay. Uh, what do you think about IoT application in smart power systems? Okay, what do you think? Yeah, that's all. So that you know, it is a one-hour session. So we 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 do a, I would say a, a cross conversation, huh? something like you understand from your peers. There are 90 people here. Huh? Okay, so uh, I think collectively we are uh, we are smart or we are we are more intelligent than uh, being one uh, single person. That's the reason we use these kind of things, and this is going to be a open-ended question. I hope, okay. So you can you can give your comments, okay. According to you, what do you think uh, IoT uh, or where IoT can be applied? Okay, where? Uh, or rephrase this, okay. Where? Where we can apply IoT in a smart system. This is our uh, another menti. Okay, so you have in your screen. Okay. 
okay and the code is also available 3220953 want the uh, link i can also give you the link or, or i think this is better to go to www.20.com use the code 32209539 and please cast your votes what uh, we want here is uh, where we can apply iot in smart power system so you know what is the priority of a smart power system i i don't want uh, uh, to go into the basics of what is a smart power system okay yeah now yeah great so where we can apply iot yeah smart meters okay great and there are some interesting application what you have put like uh, uh, demand side management okay in one of the uh, things yeah in form automation okay yeah okay i have only two responses in inverter technology okay measuring usage energy meters form automation okay remote monitoring and automation yeah production okay electrical vehicle agriculture okay, traffic management but I, i i want you to go into the details for example remote monitoring and automation it's good yeah, yeah. in manufacturing where okay. something like that you have to go a little deep inside now we know broader huh, varieties right so now we have to go a little deeper where uh, where to use it in which use case to use it distributed line for locator okay automated power generation and usage in today's scenario at hospital power restructuring smart waste management control smart devices don't know energy supply hospitals yeah medicine okay sensor and monitoring anything more something various manufacturing systems in the essential part for collect and optimize data and use of the intense analytics in order to know where we should focus in distributed system very good smart infrastructure load management okay any other use case distribution okay. smart parking okay good so there are some uh, good information you guys have given okay so let's uh, uh, go to some of the use case or the use case where i i, I have used personally uh, the smart power system in one of the plants okay i will just explain to you how we used and uh, what is the um, use case yeah and i'm going to my notes okay so this is uh, with uh, one of my example almost i think 7 uh, 8 uh, years back okay yeah 7 to 8 years back but uh, i feel this particular use case is more uh, 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 applicable even today okay and we can learn a lot from this okay so i was the um, uh, say the facility manager uh, of a big company okay and uh, uh, the problem is uh, uh, your problem for this facility manager huh? okay so uh, um, unfortunately it is me that that okay so suddenly what happened is uh, there is a um, i was working for a company which was manufacturing a wind turbine gearbox wind turbine gearbox okay so wind turbine gearbox uh, how normally it is manufactured is uh, there are uh, 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 i would say two important components here one is the casting which is the outer body 
of a gearbox and you will have a lot of gears okay this is the i would say uh, everything uh, okay uh, or or working uh, elements uh, elements or gears so uh, casting is a no problem for me but this particular gears is a problem for me because gear has lot of process one of the process is heat treatment okay heat treatment in this heat treatment there are two things one is called carburizing okay it's one of the mechanical heat treatment or metallurgical one and another is called nitriding okay and this is very very important or i would say key factor for the reliability of the gearbox okay reliability of gearbox okay and there is something called i don't know how many of you have uh, uh, heard about this so there is something called uka okay v is called volatile okay uncertain and c is for complex okay and a is uh, ambiguous okay normally uh, uh, say last uh, decade or so or even now you know uh, things are very volatile right so we don't know when the virus is going to come or not come okay so a lot of things are there okay and everything is uncertain okay volatile uncertain and it's complex in nature okay environment is complex it's ambiguous it's doubtful always okay so this is the real reality of our real um, real uh, world okay so the same way the company where i was working they were also having a buka situation okay and uh, suddenly they told like uh, we are going to have uh, some more furnaces okay they want to add furnaces add furnace okay and this furnace is an electrical furnace it is an electrical furnace okay so now uh, what is an electrical furnace in an electrical point of view okay so first you will have a power supply okay and this power supply here in this case is 415 volt okay ac and uh, if i uh, draw the single line diagram so you will have an isolator after that uh, you will have some contactors yeah okay Uh, and then you will have uh, your your um, say the thyristor okay or i would say a series of thyristors okay thyristors uh i don't know okay okay and this gets connected yeah so this is the thyristor symbol please ignore if i am not need in my uh, things yeah so there are thyristors all over this is uh, p1 and i have one more thyristor here okay uh, thyristors here okay this is t2 and i have one more this is t3 okay yeah and this thyristor has uh, a yeah yeah uh, i would say a signal okay so this is the power right okay so i have air control uh, signals also so what happens is there will be one more grid which also will uh, uh, will travel like this okay yeah and this gets connected to something called programmable logic controllers plc okay so this plc has an input from a thermocouple okay so it will have a thermocouple okay and uh, you will have for each region so huh? okay there will be t1 thermocouple t2 thermocouple and t3 thermocouple okay for each and every zone there will be a thermocouple okay so these are all called zones actually okay t1 is for say top zone middle and the bottom zone okay now from here the output is going to nothing but a yeah, resistor okay everywhere oh, oh, it is not resistor in the inductor what i am drawing right <laughs> yeah so it is resistor okay and i have resistors here 
okay and uh, this resistors of uh, i would say uh, all um, connected to a neutral and it is going back okay i am not going into that uh, now okay so these are all the resistors so i will name this as r1 okay r2 r3 now what happened this is a one one furnace sir. this is what one furnace means okay one furnace this is completely one furnace okay similarly i have um, say almost 13 furnaces in my, uh, in the plant okay 13 furnaces of such 13 furnaces okay so uh, in this 13 there were uh, some eight furnaces already running and suddenly uh, the management have told like uh, we are giving you five more furnaces and you have to add it okay so now uh, what would be the challenge okay can someone unmute and tell what would be the challenge if suddenly people are asking to add five furnaces okay business requirement is requirement is add five furnaces okay can you unmute and speak please what do you think would be the problem if suddenly they are asking you you are an, you are the electrical manager okay yeah and each furnace is of 600 kilowatt okay yeah. suddenly they are asking you to add five more furnace what would be the challenge can someone unmute and speak please maybe the current rating sir Sorry, uh, please come again. Current. current. Okay, current will go high. Okay, so the power requirement will, will suddenly become high. Yeah, right. Okay. Any other problems? Uh, because of that, what will happen? GB is gearbox. So Hassan, GB is gearbox. Yeah. Okay. Can someone tell me? Suddenly, you 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 are the facility manager. Just imagine, like you are the substation manager or the facility manager. Suddenly, they are saying, like, I am going to give you five more furnace. What will happen? Or what will be the challenge as a facility manager or an electrical engineer of that particular plant? We need to increase the transmission power. We need to increase the transmission power. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, good answer. Great. Yeah, anything else? What? Um, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. Anything more than this? Yeah. Can you can you add a, a equipment suddenly to a to a plant? What are the legal requirements or what are the technical requirements you have to take into consideration? Can you do that? Just uh, just a hint, yeah. Sanctioned MD to be raised, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, Mohan, sir. Perfect. So the the first and the foremost thing is. Uh, uh, the maximum demand okay. I don't know about Bangladesh but in India we follow something called two tariff system okay. two tariff system that means uh, I pay for the maximum demand okay which is in KVA or MVA okay it will get calculated and I also pay for my KWH okay. that is my energy consumption Obviously, there are power factor and other uh, penalties are there, but basically, I have two charges. Okay, so this will be fixed. Okay, and this will be based on my consumption. Based on consumption. Sir, one Mohammed Rafi has told that design point of you check the line capacities. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, Ravi. Uh, Rafi. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Yes. So the, the first and foremost is uh, this maximum demand is one problem. Second problem, as Rafi have told, the design capacity, design capacity. Okay. Anything else would be a problem? Yeah, two part tariff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
so uh, let's uh, uh, i think this is uh, something um, i would say you can do it provided you do the second one yeah one you can do it but uh, you have to finish the second one design capacity is very very important rather than um, uh, going for a maximum demand rise maximum demand rise if you ask they will give you not a problem provided you have to prove that uh, uh, for that you have the load and you have the transmissions and other things for that yeah that's uh, that is the very important thing so now design capacity as you rightly said that this is the uh, uh, important factor here the factor uh, or the problem what uh, uh, the people face that or uh, i face rather that is uh, the distribution the distribution is uh, i have uh, um, yeah 33 kv grid okay actually the in incoming is uh, 220 kv after that i have a step down okay and then this line comes which is uh, 33 kv yeah and after this 33 kv uh, i have transformers okay and uh, this transformers is 33 kb 415 volt okay and this is going to say okay four furnaces already yeah and suddenly uh, i have similarly you, you uh, say uh, three furnaces there okay everything is 33 kb 415 volt 33 kb 415 volt and uh, this was catering for some furnaces again this was catering for some furnaces okay again i will have some breakers here yeah so this is how it is and there is also some type breakers here yeah so this is how my uh, single line diagram would look like okay so what happened is i don't have a spare capacity what i can do is obviously i can extend it i can connect uh, one more uh, new new uh, new furnace here right i can add one more i can add maybe two more i can add maybe two more okay so what happens is 1 2 3 4 5 i can add it right so four furnaces i can add and each is of uh, how much uh, 600 kilowatt into 5 which is almost like uh, 3000 kilowatt yeah so this is the capacity as it is resistive you can also say like okay 3000 kv because it is a pure resistive load or i would say majority is resistive load the another problem what i have is the sizing of this transformer already this is sizing of the transformer is this is 2 mva uh, this is also 2 mva okay and this was somewhere around 1.8 mva okay so it was catering to some loads already and it is been designed and it is been approved by the people okay and there is one more uh, aspect the one two and there is a very important third aspect and i will mark it in red which is uh, design capacity approval okay by chief inspector to government chief electrical inspector to government yeah ceig chief electrical inspector to government in india we have that and i have hope in bangladesh also you will be having it yeah so there is a um, uh, government uh, um, uh, say uh, approval also we need who will validate how the design is done and whether it is safe okay so that is something uh, which um, uh, is very much audible yeah i think sir uh, jagdishan sir maybe you can increase your um, uh, thing yeah yeah i will i will try to increase my volume also not a problem yeah great so this is the problem what they faced okay uh, uh, and now there is a solution needed so now you you have a real problem can you can you suggest uh, how you can use iot and give us a, a solution for this can anyone unmute and uh, give your thoughts or you can also text it yeah how you can give a solution using iot here yeah i hope you 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 saw this okay you know what is the problem i will show you the technical um i would say block diagram or general arrangement okay uh, it has a plc and there are thyristor controls yeah and this is how it is yeah can someone suggest me what uh, the team should do uh, and here they have used iot and how using iot we can find a solution
what is this no one is speaking come on i probably members come on it's a very simple question any answers come on no no answer is right or wrong can you unmute and speak okay so no one is ready to talk no problem fine so what we did Uh, is something called um, it is called demand yeah sir we have yeah please any any thoughts through the iot using we can we can know the load demand yeah we can know the load demand yes hasan but uh, uh, how we can go to the next level we have to do something like demand side management right here it's a, it's a management of the demand okay if you are able to manage the demand obviously you will be able to have a better grade shifting of loads mm, no but shifting of loads using iot we we are, we are talking about iot right shifting of loads is a classical say restructuring of your electrical infrastructure or electrical grid right using iot okay so like you guys i also got struck okay and uh, i think uh, those are the days when i was uh, talking to a lot of uh, uh, people and uh, uh, i got some good academic friends who suggested how this can be done and we identified some party also who can do it unfortunately those technologies those time are available at uh, uh, germany and we imported the technology and we used it yeah so that's something what we did and uh, this is what i'm going to explain to you all yeah so i told you that uh, in this you have something like called a plc so what is a plc anyone know what is a plc this one what is a plc full form of a plc programmable logic controller okay great okay. yeah good yes. so uh, do you do you think like uh, mm, uh, that is an intelligent device you can make it intelligent very good yeah great yeah that is what we did yeah so uh, wahid zaman yeah your 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 answer is perfectly right that is what we did yeah we 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 triggered the thyristor okay um, and using an algorithm we calculated how much would be the load or the maximum performance of the load of these uh, uh, transformers and uh, we triggered the thyristors okay such a way uh, that the demand is smoothened yeah that is what we did in this particular case cool so mm, just to save some time probably i can give you the link of my research gate uh, uh, article where you can find more information about this yeah and you can use that for your for the research yeah just okay so if uh, uh, after this you can uh, you can go through that uh, whenever time permits and uh, probably uh, you can you can ping me if you have some doubts and other things and now we can go to the next topic which is uh, blockchain yeah go to the next topic which is blockchain uh, before that i will just post my Uh, my articles link in the chat, and you can go through it when okay. that you will have these things.
Okay, this is the link of my uh, thing, and you can. Go through it when time permits. Uh, let me rush through so that uh, you you know what it is. Yeah. So this is one of the presentations I have made some time back. Okay. And I will directly go through the things. Yeah. You can see what we did is we want to avoid these peak loads. What we want is we want to avoid these peak loads and we want to smoothen the demand. Okay. And uh, what we did is, uh, this is uh, uh, all the furnaces are switching on at their uh, mercy, or, or I would say, uh, at their will, okay? So that is the problem what they were facing. And what we try to do is, uh, we try to minimize it uh, using a, a switching algorithm so that the tyrus switches uh, in a sequence such a way the optimum peak load is there, okay? So something from here, from this particular point, it is being now, uh, So somewhere from here, it is being now minimized to do something here. Okay, this is the savings. So how we did is uh, first, it is not simply you can uh, you cannot switch it. You have to understand the process. So we we deployed. I always uh, tell to my students like you always use this particular terminology USA. Okay, understand the process, simplify, and after that automate. So when we understood the process, we see that there is a scope for the first 60 minutes to optimize. And after that, the last 20, 30 minutes also you can optimize. That means you can do a demand control. It's, if you switch off for a fraction of, say, minute during that particular period of recovery and drop, nothing is going to do in the, happen in the process. Okay, So that is what we, we try to do it. Yeah. And how we implemented, uh, I will just go to that particular slide. You can see from uh, the PLC, there is a, a signal coming to the thyristor. It is in the form of 0 to 10 volt. And in between, we inserted an embedded system. Okay, And this acts as an, um, uh, as, uh, acts as an uh, uh, in between uh, between the thyristor and the PLC. Okay, So we inserted an hardware. And this hardware gets communicated to the upper level systems. And the upper level system will keep a track of what is the load of each and every transformer. And there is a uh, small algorithm which will always see like whether the transformer load is less than 1.27 MBA, which is the uh, which is the ideal load of the particular transformer. And it will see like, okay, what is 100 percentage is this furnace is, uh, is asking me energy. That means in terms of 10 volt, 10 volt is 100 uh, percentage. 5 volt means 50 percentage. And uh, what it does is it, it does a quick calculation and see whether there will be an overload of the transformer. If there is no overload, it will allow the uh, reference to come to the thyristor. And when it is an overload, what it will do is even if the furnace PLC asks a 10 volt, it will not give you the 100 percentage. It will only give you 8, 8 or 80 percentage. In such a way, the, the limit is uh, uh, adult. Okay, The limit, by the way, here is 1.3 MVA for this particular transformer. Uh, of I think uh, uh, two in way, okay. So that is the safe flow, okay. In order to avoid some uh, overshoots and other things, so we used uh, um, uh, for a pilot, okay. So you know uh, things cannot happen over the night, right? So pilot, we used LabVIEW kind of systems to implement it and we drive this uh, project. After that, we went to, to uh, yeah German supplier and with them we were able to implement it. Okay, it's cool. So this is about uh, IoT implementation. Hope you got some, uh, I would say, yeah, basic uh, information of how this can be used in an industry. Yeah, and industry you will have these kind of problems then and there, and uh, you have to solve those problems. Yeah, so that's what is expected from an electrical engineer. Of that. Yeah. So with this, let's go to the next menti. The menti here is about blockchain. So what I want to understand from each and every one of you is uh, have you seen how a blockchain works? Yeah. So let me understand from you. And after that, uh, let's calibrate our review course based on what you guys say or what you participants say. Okay, so this is the next menti. Yeah, you can 
they can cast your votes? The question is, have you seen how blockchain works? It's a very simple yes or no. So it's very simple to vote. There are yes, there are no's, okay. Okay, we are 73. At least we should touch some 40. There are only 18 participants who have given their view. 19 now. Can I have more, please? Okay, 20. Come on, what happened to other participants? At least we should touch 40. Okay, so there is a very clear difference between yes and no. There are few who have seen it and the majority of others have not seen it. So. With that, uh, I want to first introduce you the blockchain. Okay, for this, I strongly recommend in all my sessions, uh, uh, Mr. Andre's uh, website. I don't know how many of you have seen it. I have just put the thing there. Okay, first of all, blockchain. Why it is needed? What it is? First of all, okay. So this is based on something called hashing. Okay. So what is a hash? It is something like a, a unique number uh, or a unique key which gets generated with a computer algorithm. Okay. And the hash normally uh, it is something like a 256. Uh, you see, this is the bits. Okay, how many bits this particular hash would be? For example, I put my name Somo. Okay, for Somo the hash is this. Yeah, you can see this is the hash for Somo. Okay, I delete this and again I put Somo. You can see the same hash. Can you see 34D06 in the last? You just track it. Okay, and uh, uh, I delete it. And I put the same, you can see again and again, I am getting the same hash for my characters. This is nothing but it's just something, uh, an encoding technique, okay, which computers use. Okay, let's not go much deep into it. Now, this hash is the basics for blockchain. And now let's uh, understand what is a block, okay. So, block is nothing but um, it has a serial, okay, and it has a something like nonce, okay. You don't have to um, see what is what, okay, but just understand what it is, okay. So uh, these are all the, the the identifiers for each and every block. Say a block number one, and I am putting Somo here. You can see there is a different hash which is getting generated. Now when I modify this, what happens? The total block is going red, right? So what it also does is. Uh, um, once I change it, I have to sign it. So in this particular uh, environment in the UI, they have given something called mine. Mine is nothing but signing it, okay? So what I will do is I will first enter the data, what I have to send, and after that, I will put mine, okay? Then what will happen? It is becoming green, you can see. So now what happens is there is a, uh, there is a signature I am making for my data. So I have my data, I have something called nonce, I have the block ID, and I have some unique number, which is hash, okay? And this gets created, and I have mine. So this is my one block, okay? Now, what is a blockchain? So this is one block, right? What is a blockchain? You go to blockchain here, here very um, superbly, um, and uh, Andresa have put it, okay? For example, here I say like it is so more, and I mine it, okay? it will go green. After that, I'm going to block two, okay? Saying, mm, uh, I'm so my, uh, my my second name is uh, Bala, okay? So, Bala Subramaniam, Somo Subram. So, that is my name, okay? Then I say, my, okay? Again, it will, it will connect my previous hash, okay? Previous hash here, and my present hash. So, this also will be treated as a data. My previous hash will also be treated as a data. Now, what I'm doing is, oh, 
uh, I want to do a name change. Okay, so what I'm doing is instead of a Somo, ah, okay, let me do this also. Okay, I say like uh, I stay at uh, Coimbatore. Okay, and I mine. Okay, similarly, I can put all this information, sir, no problem. Okay, just imagine I am going to change this Somo. No, it's not Somo. It is Somo Sundara. Okay, just imagine. Uh, when I touch this and I change something, everything is getting changed. Okay, so this is the this is the chain. Okay, I I cannot change one block at any time. Okay, if I have to change it, then I have to change all the blocks. Okay, so this is how blockchain works. Uh, if I have to change again, I have to sign it. Okay, it will have some timestamp and other things. Only then it will create green. Then I have to change the next one, and then I have to change the next one. Suddenly, I say like, "Hey, I want to change this." Okay, it's not Bala; it's Bala Subramani. Okay, can you see? If I change it, what happens? This is unchanged, but from this onwards, all my blocks will go red. Okay, I will I will not be able to uh, do any small change only in this particular area. Okay, so this is what uh, blockchain. Again, if I have to normalize it, I have to sign it. And I have to sign all of the blocks. Just imagine, now all of the blocks. If I made thousand blocks after that, and I want to replace one of the block, uh, some uh, thousand blocks before, then I have to sign all the thousand blocks. Now, let's see what is it. Distributed computing. Distributed computing is nothing but instead of having this blockchain in one server, you have it in all the servers. For example, here I say that Bala, okay, and Somo. And Coimbatore, yeah. Coimbatore. Now I also put in peer B, that is my other computer, okay, another server, okay, which I may have it in Bangladesh also. This I am having in um, India, okay. So I put it, okay, and I can mine it, okay. Mine, mine, mine. That mine is nothing but signing it. Huh? Just have an analogy, something like that, okay. Now I have mined it. And I'm going to mine this also. Okay. Suddenly, what happens is uh, in India server. Okay, I have an influence in India. Okay, you know, I, I know all the people. Okay, I say like in India, I'm going to change this particular number. Okay, instead of Somo, it is a Soma. Okay, and what I do is I somehow manage to sign this also. Okay. Now what happens? I can do the change here, but I cannot do the change in PRB, right? So the server in Bangladesh will have a different data, whereas I will have a different data. Then after this, what will happen is in the distributed ledger, there will be one more server. There will be one more server, okay, which will be there in the in the in the top, which will supervise whether all the peers are having the same data or not. If it is not having the same data, then it will say like, "Hey boss, I think the server one is having a different data and server two is having a different." Data. So this is about blockchain. Okay, any questions here? Any questions? Sir, uh, in what way uh, blockchain is connected to the uh, power system now, sir? Yeah. If you could able to connect it, uh, it will be useful for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very nice. So uh, I think. Uh, uh, again, uh, it's not uh, individuals' uh, uh, information. Let's go to the collective responsibility. Okay, so that is uh, my next minute. Okay, what do you think about blockchain application in smart power system and where it is used and why it is used? What you 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 all think about it? Okay, so this is the next minute. What do I, I want all of you to answer it? Let's find out uh, from you you all. Okay, so you all, my life is easy. You know. And uh, I think uh, you all also can learn from each other. Yeah. So this is our next mentee. I have put the uh, link also in the chat. Uh, so what comes to your mind? How this can be used? Yeah. Can I have some responses, please? How blockchain can be used? Consumption. Okay. A system who maintains states. No, uh, I'm asking how blockchain can be used in a power system. It's data storage and processing. Okay. So very important. Uh, blockchain is uh, very costly. Integral grid into a peer-to-peer -peer network. 
Vending of smart prepaid meter. No, uh, see, why, why then? Okay, great, I accept, okay, vending of smart pre uh, prepaid meter, okay, but why it is used? Factor production of clean energy. Again, uh, yeah, where it is used, great, you have answered. Why it is used? You have answered. Track the production of clean energy. Yeah, perfect. But why it is used? No. Yeah. No, sorry, blockchain is a specific type of database. No. That is not the answer what we are looking at. You have put where it is used, but why? As we know, security of the data in the power system is very crucial. With blockchain, we can transfer data without concern of wrong data. Wrong data or data integrity. That means someone will change the data. Energy trading, great. Energy trading, it can be used, yes. Identify the error when it is occurring, great, great. Yeah. Anything else? Lot of places it can be used, yeah. It can be used in, yeah, blockchain, can be used for smart grid, yeah. Then, then why? Okay, smart grid, agreed. Why? Microgrid monitoring and control, great. Then again, why? I think uh, uh, I think this is the I would say a perfect answer. Okay, security of the data is very very important. Okay, and that is the reason uh, blockchain is being used in energy. Okay, because 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 the important factor is we are speaking about energy trading. Okay, and energy trading when you how to do? Okay, there are four people distributed generation is happening, and one person is saying like, no, I have done this generation. Okay, but the other guy will say like, no, 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 uh, um, you haven't generated that much. In my meter, it is showing something like this. So if you have a blockchain and you connect all your meters and your metering system as peers, what will happen? The data from one computer will be available in other computer as a copy. And at the same time, you will have more trust and integrity of the data is assured, okay, or ensured. Obviously, people are arguing like uh, with the coming of uh, uh, quantum computers, so you can also hack a blockchain system. Obviously, that is, the, uh, that is a topic for future. But as of now, the present state, this is the best way how you can secure transaction data. Okay? And uh, nowadays, uh, I think uh, people are using it for uh, uh, storing, uh, uh, say, government uh, records and other things. Already people are using it. Uh, uh, supply chain is using the yeah, blockchain uh, and blockchain technology is the game changer for energy supplies. Yeah, great. Yeah, anti counterfeiting, but here it is more with the energy. And another use case, what I want to bring to you is uh, the, the settings of the relays. Okay, there also people are using hashing technology. Okay, that uh, one of the very simple things is the CRC. Okay, in all of our uh, programs and other things, you, know, you will have this checksum and uh, all those things, right? The unique number gets generated. Okay, the same way now people are moving towards the hashing algorithms where they are ensuring like the source code or the firmware of each and every relay is secured or what it is available at the, at the um, uh, say the, the source end that means the OEM is the same what is uh, working in the uh, uh, say the power grid or uh, Bangladesh power grid or India power grid because nowadays what happens is social engineering and other things are also coming into play when um, uh, cyber security is being discussed. Even people are cloning a yeah, yeah, device and they are putting a bug inside the firmware and they are sending it. What will happen? Uh, you put it in your central power grid, then that becomes an IED and that uh, uh, that uh, uh, intelligent electronic device, uh, if it is having a, um, a malware implanted firmware, then it will start uh, erratically behaving or it can start giving access to other people to operate your grid. Okay, So that is the application of a blockchain and you have seen how a blockchain works and how this can be used. One is for energy accounting and another is for the security of our devices. Even people are researching that if there is an uh, there is a trip or or yeah uh, I, i'm not uh, talking about trip okay Let, let's let's talk about uh, um, say a command okay from a central command center you are giving a command and that command uh, if it is coming from the central command center or from a hacker who knows right so for that also now people are using technologies like if you give a command from one one substation the same command how to be also um, um, yeah, uh, 
peer networked to your other um, uh, systems and if it is matching if both the things are matching only then that command will work you know, for a uh, for a remotely operated substation somewhere else in a desert or in some areas okay uh, in order to avoid hacking okay those kind of things are coming but tripping it will immediately trip okay but the tripping circuits you know um, how secure it will be it will not be normally connected to any network okay but the normal activities are the scada um, activities then obviously there will be a remote trip possibility or, uh, or a remote command i will not term it as trip it is a remote command possible the remote command now people are exploring how blockchain can be used so that they can ensure that it is a yes secure uh, and an authorized trip it is not someone um, uh, like a hacker who have created that particular trip okay, okay? and uh, i think there are a lot of uh, examples of people hacking systems recently maharashtra government declared like there was a cyber attack a lot of things are there okay so with this uh, let's um, uh, go to our last entry okay where i want to have your feedback so how it was okay and how this can be improved yeah. or uh, i think uh, uh, you know one sir you will have a feedback session right sir yeah so, uh, maybe i will get feedback from you not a problem yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Feedback will be collected uh, yeah. in the registration. Can you share with me, sir, so that I can improve also. Yeah. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for active listening. And uh, I think uh, we have now touched 49 entries, right? Uh, very good. It's almost 50 percent of the people have participated. Good. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Samasundaram, sir. Uh, over to the MOC team. Probably. They'll be having a formal vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Somasundaram, sir. We really appreciate the time you took for sharing with us your knowledge about applications of IoT and blockchain. As the world is becoming more and more dependent on these two, this webinar has made it easier for all of us to begin our journey in these fields. I would also like to thank the respected principals of both Janssen's Institute of Technology and Bangladesh University of Business and Technology for being our backbone throughout this process. This webinar wouldn't have been possible without the constant effort and support from our student branch counselors and women in engineering advisors. So hereby, I extend my gratitude towards them too. Last but not the least, this session got its life from all the participants and the volunteers. This wouldn't have been a success without you all. So once again, I thank each and every one who were present here for giving your support and cooperation and for making it happen successfully. Thank you all. Take care. Be safe. Thank you, Shruti. Now I'd like to call upon MD Asla Moding, Professor at BUBT, to share some words. Sir? Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech regarding the seminar. It was really helpful. I think everyone will learn a lot from it. And it has been a pleasure being with all of you today. And thank you for all your patience. I wish you all a very good afternoon. Stay safe and stay well. And this is the ending moment of today's event. Thank you. Participants, kindly share your feedback through the feedback link, which is posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you all. And these certificates will be provided to the participants who fill the feedback form. Thank you. <laughs>